Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about vectors and scalars and how those are used in physics as different numbers and different values that we look at can either be a vector or a scalar. A scalar is something that just has a value, so just has a magnitude, and that could be something like a temperature. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. So when we talk about things like a velocity, a velocity will have a magnitude, a certain speed at which you are going. But it also when we talk about velocity, it has a specific direction. So there is a difference in going uh, three meters per second east versus three meters per second west. Those are two different velocities, even though in both cases you're going at the same speed. So let's go ahead and get started here and what we see. And the first thing we want to talk about is displacement. Now what do we mean by displacement? Well the definition of a displacement is the change in the position of an object. And that is its net change. So not overall motion, but it's change in between two points. And we define that here as delta x or the change in position is equal to the final position minus the initial position. So x with the subscript of f is the final position. x with the subscript 0 is the initial position. And delta x is the displacement. So we just subtract the two to get us our net displacement. And the unit we use for that is the meter. That is our SI unit for displacement is generally in meters. Although you will find occasional things where the meter is not necessarily convenient. And we may be using other forms of the meter as the metric uh, prefixes to get uh, to use other values. So let's look at, in, at some uh, more here. And what we have to dis explain displacement is that again, it looks only at the initial and final position. It does not tell us about the total motion. So in our image here, you could have a professor walking back and forth over the course of a lecture in front of a blackboard. And as they do that, they may walk a large distance. However, their net their net motion is only given by their initial position where they started and their final position. So in this case, the displacement is two meters, even though the professor may have walked many more meters of that than that during the course of a lecture. So displacement is one of the examples of a vector quantity. It has a magnitude, which is how far in this case two meters, but it also has a direction. So it would be two meters to the right. And that would be a different displacement than moving two meters to the left. So this looks at the example here. Now let's look at this in uh, detail, a little more detailed uh, example calculation here. And what we see is that we start off, let's look at our numbers here. We have the initial value is 1.5 meters. Now, how do we define what 1.5 meters is? Well, there has to be some reference point. And we will choose a reference point that makes our calculations convenient. So in this case, the reference point is a little more. We're, we're starting off 1.5 meters from our zero point of motion. So we want to look at that. And then we want to look at the final position which is 3.5 meters. And in order to find the change in displacement, find the displacement, we have to subtract those two. So we take the final position and we subtract the initial position. And if we put those numbers in there, then we would subtract 1.5 meters from 3.5 meters. And that would give us 2 meters. 
but we have to look carefully. It is also plus two meters. That plus is actually important. So the fact that it is a positive two meters makes a difference. If we had started, if our initial position was 3.5 meters and our final was 1.5, then these would be switched and we would have ended up with negative two meters. So this means a motion, the positive sign, indicates that the movement is in the positive x direction. So and that is very important. The direction in which you're moving is going to be very important as we continue to look through this unit and talk about motion and describing motion in one dimension. Now, look also looking here, what we want to discuss and I've mentioned this already is that there is a difference between distance and distance traveled. The distance is the magnitude of the displacement vector. So the distance here would be two meters. That is different than the distance traveled by the professor. That is not something that we are looking at here. In this case, we only want to look at the net movement. So in this case, the professor ended up two meters to the right of where she had started. Now let's review a little bit and look a little bit about vectors and scalars. So uh, scalar quantity has a magnitude but does not have a direction. So examples of this could be a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. It could be a distance of five meters. These are things that do not have a specific direction. So remember, distance is the magnitude of the displacement vector. So distance tells us how far. The displacement tells us how far and in what direction. So when we look at vectors, we can look at things that have a magnitude and a direction. So they have both things. So a velocity of 30 meters per second east would be an example of a vector. The speed would be the scalar quantity, which would be just the speed, just how fast you're moving. Making it a velocity adds the vector quantity and tells us that it is moving in a certain direction. We can also look at forces. A force of 35 newtons downward would be an example of a vector quantity. So these can be indicated by arrows, for example, a larger, longer arrow, meaning a larger magnitude. So if we were looking at ve uh, velocities, we could draw a velocity arrow for one, for one velocity, and we could draw a velocity arrow for a second velocity. And we would know just by looking at these that v2 is greater than v1. We know that they're in the same direction, but we know that the magnitude of v2 is greater than the magnitude of v1. So the longer arrow, the size of the arrow tells us the magnitude. The direction of the arrow, arrow tells us the direction. We can also indicate it with a plus or minus sign. So you might write a velocity of minus 3 meters per second. And that is different than a velocity of plus three meters per second. What is different about different about them is the direction in which you are moving. So here the numerical value tells us the magnitude and the sign tells you the direction. Now, how do we determine directions and zero points in some of this? Well, in some cases it sets up we set up our coordinate system. In general, we look at horizontal for horizontal motion, the right to the right is positive. So moving to the right would be a positive and moving to the left would be negative. For vertical motion, we generally consider upward motion to be positive and downward motion to be negative. However, sometimes it is more convenient to switch these around and an example might be falling objects. So an object that is falling, it may be better to in look at the downward motion as being positive and upward as being negative and sometimes that makes the calculations easier. You can also set up coordinate systems to make your zero point where you want to be. The specific zero point does not matter because we're looking at a displacement or changes relative to each other. So the exact zero point can be reset to make the calculations easier when we're doing some problems with this.
So let's go ahead and finish up this unit and we'll finish up this section with our summary. And what we've looked at is displacement is the net motion of an object and is a vector quantity. It has a magnitude and it has a direction as we see here. Scalars have only a magnitude. And we also talked about coordinate systems and how they can be chosen to help make the analysis of the problem easier. So that concludes this lecture on vectors and scalars. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.